All set. Good evening. This is the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals, February 23rd, 1999. And I apologize for being late. We were having a meeting with the town attorney to get some new members on board. And I uh, want to welcome Ann Alderkin and Jack Keneally to the board. Uh, Lois Morrill is here tonight to uh, run the tape machine. And uh, uh, Alice Allen, who is normally our secretary, uh, recording secretary, is at home ill. I understand she's hopefully sitting in front of the TV taking notes for the next minute. So Alice, if you're out there, get well. Go for it. <laughs> uh, first item on our uh, agenda is the election of officers. This is the first meeting of the new year. We uh, fortunately did not have a January meeting. And uh, so we need to elect a uh, chair and the secretary of the board. And I'll accept any nominations for the chair position. I, I move that Henry Warren uh, be elected chair for another term. Second the motion. I sense a railroad going on here. Uh, are there other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, Henry Warren as uh, the chair for the coming year? Signify by saying aye. Any, any opposed? I'm neutral. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there a nomination for the role of secretary? That is, by the way, a board position. Uh, it's, uh, Tom LaFrod has been our secretary for the last year. It's not a... Uh, I move that Tom LaFrod be elected secretary for another term. Seconded. Is there, are there other nominations? You with us? Okay. It's, it's hard work, I know. <laughs> All those in favor of that motion, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, I see none. Tom LaPride will be the secretary for the next year. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, now let's approve the minutes of November 24th. Were there questions or corrections? <clears throat> I, I have a couple of corrections, or th uh, one correction and one question. Page six. Uh, down there it refers, and I presume this to be me, uh, by the underlined section on Lewandowski, I believe that should be Mr. Houghton versus my first name. <laughs> All right. I don't see where you are, I'm sorry. Uh, third, par fourth paragraph down, or fifth paragraph. Oh, I see, okay, Mr. Amory, okay. huh? Okay. Uh, then over on page seven, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this is a correction, but I, I, I will leave it up to Tom to determined on the second paragraph, second line, it starts off, you can't repeat any piece of property. That, you know, and I won't read the rest of it, but it, that, I don't know whether that should be, you can't replicate, you can't duplicate, but repeat, I wasn't sure whether that really read very well. And duplicate would be a more accurate word. Okay. Duplicate. So we would like the minutes uh, corrected to yeah. read, you can't duplicate any piece of property unless he feels, et cetera. On the fifth paragraph there, there was a vote five to two. I believe only six people were present. That should be amended to read five, five to one. Mr. Bickford approves. Okay. The vote in the middle of, <laughs> middle of page seven, there was a vote of five to two is to be corrected to read, there was a vote of five to one in favor. Yep. Mr. Bickford was opposed. Any other corrections? Mr. Fristashi. Are we um, approving the November 24th minutes or the December 29th minutes? I'm sorry, December 29th minutes. That was what was, I read off the agenda, but you're right, it was. Uh, uh, that should be a correction there. Should be December 29th minutes, I'm sorry. So if the agenda goes with the minutes, change uh, item C to December 29th. Thanks, Joe. Any other corrections? If not, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes with those corrections? Any opposed? I see none. Uh, we'll move on then to the next item on the agenda, which uh, is old business and there is none that I'm aware of. Uh, and new business. Uh, before we get into that, Bruce, let me just point out, we didn't get location maps with this agenda, and you've been very good about that as they're a big help, but 
You should have. I, yeah. I, I, it didn't turn out to matter a whole lot in these for me anyway because you could figure it out really quickly. But uh, I just, in case that slipped off your radar, I wanted to remind you that that was extremely no, helpful. No, I think it must have been uh, yeah. oversight by the staff. Okay. Uh, the next item then of business would be to hear the appeal of Carl Franson for Patricia Franson <coughs> to Stony Book Road, tax map U03, lot 115, for a front property line variance of 10 feet from the required 40 feet and a rear property line variance of 15 feet from the required 20 feet, <coughs> excuse me, to replace and enlarge an existing concrete piano, patio. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, it, it, I, I think it might be appropriate for me to recuse myself. Uh, the Fransons are a very close friend of my son's. The children play together, and uh, I, I just think it might be helpful if I, I mean, I would prefer not to be setting in on this decision if uh, the board sees fit to allow me to be uh, You certainly have the right to recuse yourself without the okay. board's permission, so you should feel free I'm going, to, I'm going to do step that. down and... Uh, Thank you for bringing it up. Um, Who is here for the applicant, please? Yes, if you would, please, up here. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> before we get into this, could I get an explanation as to the relationship of the applicant and the LNG Realty Trust? And if they have um, proper authority to make this request? Can you answer that question, please? Uh, my, my wife is the, uh, is, takes care of the LNG Realty Trust, and I'm rep representing my wife as the person who's putting in the... If I like may elaborate, the legal owner is uh, Patricia Fransom. Um, although the application says LNG Realty Trust, I confirm that with Mrs. Fransom. Mm -hmm. So he is the husband of the applicant, of the owner. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, let me just clarify one other thing. Uh, you, you can, I'm sure, clear this up, Mr. Fransom, but the agenda refers to replacing and enlarging an existing concrete patio, whereas the application refers to a deck. And so be sure that it's clear in your... I, I'm not clear on what you just... Are we talking about a deck or a patio? Um, there is a, an existing patio, and I'd like to put a deck over the top of the patio and enlarge it. Okay. My point is that our agenda refers to enlarging and existing the patio as opposed to building a deck, which is different. In, in, in this particular case, I'd like to clarify that it, it, it's considered, a, the patio is considered a structure because it's a permanent situation with concrete, uh, whereas it's, it, uh, it's not like patio blocks. So there is a distinction, and that's why he can utilize at least that footprint to replace with a wooden deck. Okay, why don't you go ahead and explain what it is you're up to. Well, I, what I, I'd like to take the, uh, rather than following the existing pattern of the, of the patio, which if you look on your sheets, I, I've got it uh, shaded in, the existing part, I'd like to add an additional um, this is an excess of 90 square feet that is outside of that footprint. Uh, the reason being that because it is a, a wooden deck structure that we just thought it looked a little bit neater than to try, try to follow the angled or curved bend of the existing patio. And um, you know, I guess the, the whole reason for it is for aesthetic. <coughs> we're, we're trying to keep with the... Uh, the look of the house and not chop up a, an area around the existing patio and then break it when we get out inside of the setback. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, you have to bear with me. I'm a little confused. I, I drove by and, and looked at the house uh, from the road that runs up the side, Stony Brook Road. And I just want to be clear that I'm seeing the right picture from there. There's a what looks like a relatively new couple of sets of stairs and a small platform, yeah. porch, whatever you want to call it, 
that runs along the back of the house. And I, well, that's actually the side of the, the house. The side of the house. Well, that's why I'm trying to get right, clarified we're, because we're, I'm not sure. Well, from Stony Brook Road, um, the area in question is directly in back of the house. That would be the side that's using Shore Road. There, there was some, um, and Bruce came up with, there was a setback limitation from Stony Brook Road as well that's listed in this. And, and Bruce knows a little like better about Clarify. Please. <laughs> there are, on, on that particular lot, there are two, two property lines that are considered that, that have to meet front setback properties, uh, setbacks. What I do is to, to determine the side and the rear is that the face, the house facing, the front of the house is facing the street is considered the front to determine the side and the rear. In this case, Stony Brook is the Stony Brook front. Stony Brook is the front to determine that the, the patio and the deck proposed is to the rear. But, okay. the two, but there are two front setbacks because it's, 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 it borders on two, two streets. And the audience says that both of them have to be considered front for setback purposes. OK. Um, let me ask one more question, then I'll let the other board members turn to their questions. Uh, with this deck, I'm not clear from the drawing or anything in the application as to how high the deck would be. Um, I, Is it up or just flat on the ground? It's right on top of the concrete, <laughs> um, and it's built out. The stringers are all two by six, so the the maximum height would be under six inches with the decking that's coming up off the existing deck. So it would be below the level of the wall, even though the wall is fairly low. It's hard to see from the road to get an exact picture of the, the height. It's, well, you, you can't see it from the road at any point. But the, it is above the wall. It's just that the angle from the, the walkway uh, on Shore Road, because you're down so low, you can't, see, uh, you can't see the deck at all from down there. Other board members have questions? <clears throat> Did uh, everybody get a chance to at least go out and drive by? Mm. Hang on just a second. I want to make sure I'm not. Are you going to build around that tree? There's a. I, I'd like to just box it in, mm. leaving um, about a foot on each side. I don't think in my lifetime it'll grow that much. One of the difficulties with uh, Mr. Cronin. variance is. Uh, is question why the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted and I guess I'm not sure how your answer addresses that consideration you said I had a hard time with that too. <laughs> squaring up the patio <laughs> does make the lot a lot neater and enhances the value of the lot that may be true but the obligation of the board is to say well do you really have a hardship here or is it just something nice you'd like to do to uh, improve the value of your property. Uh, or maintain the value of my property. Uh, you don't have to maintain the value of the property. Uh, it has to have a reasonable return, which granted it has a certain subjective interpretation to it. And can you help me on that consideration? Uh, I, I, like I said, I, I had a hard time with that myself. I, that was really the the best I could come up with. Uh, you know, certainly, um, I don't think anything is, if I cannot do it, I'm, I'm certainly not going to have a, an enormous hardship because of it. Mm -hmm. But I, um, rather than following the original footprint of the, the existing patio, I, I really think it's, a, it's just a logical thing to do to square up the deck rather than 
chop it up inside of the old the old pattern. Mr. Chairman. Please, Mr. Prostasi. Are you done, Bob? I'm sorry. This is attached to the house now, this deck? Uh, yes, it is. Is there a slider that you come out of the house or a door that comes out of the house to step no, down? No, there's this? not. There's a, there's a walkway that, that comes around from the from a uh, deck on the driveway side, from the entrance on the driveway side. Okay, so this is just a patio in the back of the house? Right. With no access to the house at all? No, sir. Mr. Chairman. Did it? Mr. LeBron? No, um, just... Go ahead. Yeah. How do you utilize this right now? I mean, how... That's, and when do you use it? Um, we use it in the summertime. We put some deck chairs out there, and uh, we have a small spot that we can kind of look out onto Shore Road and out into the, uh, the water across the street. So most all summer long, we, we sit out there in the afternoon. And what is the current condition of this, this deck, the concrete? The concrete is... Um, it's sketchy. There's some, there are some holes in the, in the concrete where the rocks have popped out, and I've repaired it a number of times. Yeah. Um, that was one of our reasons for trying to do something with it, is to make it look a little bit nicer back there as well, because we are out there quite a bit in the summertime. Yeah. Wintertime, it's virtually unusable. Okay, I'm just, uh, yeah, I was just, um, and there's a tree in the middle of it too? Yes. Okay. So, Brian? Uh, you just asked the question. Okay, good. <laughs> Any other questions for the applicant? It, Thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Have you Kenyon. considered uh, a deck would have a rounded uh, edge, sort of following the contour of the current? Sure, deck? yes, we, that's, that's the alternative. <coughs> um, actually, you know, Bruce brought that up. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Franson. Thank you. Is there anyone else uh, who wishes to testify on this? Yes, sir. If you would, please. We're on TV and recording and everything. We've got to be in front of a microphone nowadays with all this high-tech stuff. And our secretary is virtually taking the notes at home. So, I mean, this is quite a high-tech operation. My name is Franklin Cobb, and uh, my mother lives next door, which would be at 833 Shore Road. And if you have a property tax map, it would be lot number 116. Uh, we don't. Would it be on the Cape side or the South Portland side? It's on the Cape side. Okay. And we really have no trouble with this. The only thing is that uh, the way it is now, see, Mr. Franson went ahead and built this structure. And um, Which structure are we referring to? The, the one he's putting an application in for. The deck? Yeah. Well, that's the first time I've heard that. Is that, in your are you aware of that? Yeah, in your, app, in your packet, you should have got a copy of the, of the denial and the notice of, of uh, violation. Uh, I didn't see such thing. Did anybody else? No. Well, I'll have to speak to the staff. Okay. Uh, because it is in the main packet here, and so isn't the, so isn't the site location. Okay, I'm sorry. That's what this is? I'm sorry, Mr. Cobb. Thanks. Just a second. It's all right. Oh, we digress for a minute. You opened up a whole new uh, arena here. Well, I still don't draw from this that it's. I, I took this to mean when I looked at it there quickly. There should be a letter. That it was. There should, there should have been a letter attached. Mm -hmm. um, to I took this just to mean that, that he asked you for a permit, you denied it, and therefore it was coming to us, and not that it was built. There's nothing here that's. Yeah, I don't have anything. There's no staples. My, mm -hmm. Well, I apologize to the staff. Yeah. There, there okay. should have been in the main packet, there is right. a notice of violation. No big harm done, but I'm glad Mr. Carb came, so we love the full. I full assumed that it was in there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, the now, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, I'm <coughs> representing my mother, who's 92 years old, and uh, I live with her. And I have a, a le letter from her uh, stating to the fact that I can represent her if you'd like. That's fine. It's no problem. You go right ahead. Okay. Um, what I'm getting at is, is that uh, um, there was a survey made on 
it's hard for me to say this because, uh, well, you people don't have the, on lot 117, which is 6 Stony Brook Road, there was a survey made and the back, back lot lines were, were staked. And so if you pick up from where the, the rear stakes are and look straight down, Mr. Franson's addition is, it looks to be right on the lot line. Does that suggest? It suggests that, that all we're asking for is they're nice neighbors, we all get along fine. That if he had a class A survey made of that rear lot line, and, and, and he's going from a 20 foot to a 15 foot setback. We'd give him a five foot setback or let the setback five feet because I should think a person would want that in as much as to be able to wa or walk around and maintain the property and whatnot like that. So, I mean, we'd be, get, be willing to go on a deal like that, but. Uh... So let me just repeat what I thought you said to be sure I understand it for the record. Uh, you're saying that you have reason to believe, based on a survey done two doors up, that one door, one door up from Mr. Franson's present house, the, the next house up on that the lot line may actually be. Uh, if you cite right on now, the edge of the of the proposed or the existing deck. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it cuts a corner of the deck. The way it looks visually, and the thing of it is, is is that if he went ahead and had a, fi a class A survey made and set up the, the boundary uh, post, we'd, we'd say go along with a, a five foot setback from that lot line. Uh, if the lot line is where you think it is, uh, he would be a lot less than five feet, wouldn't he? Right I, now, yeah. right now, yes, yeah. 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 So you'd but, have he, to... but he certainly doesn't want to get in a situation where uh, going down the road, you, he sells a property, and somebody has a, even a Class D survey. They come in and they, and they find this. Where it was still oh, are up. you're offering to try to arrange a transfer of property with him to make him? No, no, you don't no. think that's necessary? No. Okay. Not at all. There is a a, a, a mortgage survey in the yeah, I saw that. Back at, um, have you seen? This survey the, from the mortgage? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, the implication there is that there's, well, it's hard to know what there is because we don't see what the deck looks like s sketched on it, so. Well, well the, deck, the, the deck is quite large. It's what, uh, 18 by 20? Yeah, right. It, it, according to the, according to the uh, sketch plan, there's 23 feet between the house and the, and the uh, property line, if you go at right angles and parallel with the, with the edge of, of the proposed deck. And uh, I haven't got my scale with me on the site plan, but on the, on the title. But it appears to be about a half an inch or so. So it's probably, I don't know, anybody have a scale with it? I got one. I don't know if it's something you can use, but you tell me. <clears throat> Shows only showing about 18 feet total from the back of the house to the rear lot line. That side oh, lot wait line. Wait now, I got to come back off the corner. See, that's the problem. How far back from the corner of the where the house turns? How far back does the deck start? From from the walkway side, the right hand side. Four. Yeah. The answer was eight to ten feet. Yeah, that's what it scales off, eight feet. It scales off on your site plan eight feet. Well, let's try it here. Mr. Franson, if you're going to testify again, I need you up here at the microphone, so why don't you wait just a minute? That 
appears to be about 20, between 20 and 21 feet. From the at corner this, of the house to? Where this point is here. And he's showing um, 18 and five, he's showing uh, 23 feet. So there is a potential discrepancy there of a couple feet. And that's the point you're concerned about? Um, uh, no, the thing of it is, is it, they don't know officially where the lot line is. Yeah. And I, I should think before anything is built, yeah. you'd have to have a Class A survey made and know where the definite lot lines are and then go from there. Okay. And you we can't tell with this mortgage survey, that's just a boundary survey. And it, does, it doesn't define the lot lines. Okay. We take your point. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? If not, do you want to come back, Mr. Francis? Is there something you wanted to add? Or? We're still trying to sort through this. So, did you understand both Mr. Cobb's point and and the measurements that Bruce just finished talking yeah, about? Yes, I did. I just wanted to say I, I was doing physical measurements based on the mortgage, the Class D survey, to the the rock wall that's mentioned there, and that's really all I had to to work off of. So I, I just wanted to put that on the record. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other questions for Mr. Franson or anybody else, we will. Uh, Call the hearing closed, and that's uh, open for discussion. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. Since, uh, since you don't have anybody else volunteering, I'd like to make a motion to uh, deny the application to uh, grant a variance. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second the motion. Discussion of the motion. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to ask Bruce, what, where does that leave us? Uh, assuming the motion passed, uh, we learned here that we now have a deck there already, apparently. Uh, if you would get a copy of the letter, which um, it would have it stated that uh, you have to, re have to remove, but that, that this office would uh, would forego appropriate legal, uh, legal action until such time as the Board of Appeals had a chance to look at it if he chose to take it to the Board of Appeals. And it, so that point. Now, <clears throat> somebody raised earlier uh, with Mr. Franson the question about rounding off the, the deck so that it didn't intrude into the uh, setback area. Is that something you could, you'd be comfortable with if they he can he can he can use the same footprint as the patio and and go on top of that with a wooden deck. Correct. Okay. Uh, any other discussion of the uh, motion? Just um, for the benefit of the ap applicant, the reason I uh, I vote or I'm, I'm um, inclined to vote against this is uh, hardship hasn't been proved. Uh, I'm not convinced that there's a hardship there. And uh, also the question about the actual boundary line. Um, and I think the, the board has uh, gone on record to encourage uh, applicants to, uh, before, they, before they take any action, to get a boundary survey when, when it is this close. And when you're looking at five feet or so in, a, in an older area, older neighborhood, I think certainly, uh, if a boundary survey was done, I'd, I might look at this a little differently. But right now, uh, uh, I'm tending to to vote against it. Okay. Um, no other discussion. Yeah, I'd like to ask Go people ahead. who uh, who uh, Joe and Tom, is your objection based upon the merit of the request to variance, or based upon largely the indeterminacy of the setbacks? In other words, if the one alternative would be to say, table this, let them come back with a Class D survey showing the measurements, and if in fact he does, is five feet off, or would, if his, assuming his measurements on this sheet are in fact accurate, would you still oppose it on the, uh, on, on the hardship question? I think you'd have to show a stronger case for hardship. And I, I just don't see it. And he indicated that, you know, he wouldn't be upset if we denied it. 
but he hasn't. Which, he hasn't, by the way, is not a criteria. But the it's not a criteria. <laughs> no, the fact that it's that it's an existing deck there, that's not. A, you know, that doesn't that doesn't phase me one bit. Uh, I think there's enough uh, evidence uh, to indicate that uh, he's going to have to remove a portion of it, even if we do grant him a five foot variance. That some of it might have to be trimmed back. But that's my opinion, Bob. Yeah. Do you want to address the question, Tom? Or is that yeah, I, I don't think that there's any uh, indication that <clears throat> a reasonable return can't be had without this deck. And he as much as conceded that. And unfortunately, uh, that's part of the requirements that he has to meet. And, mm -hmm. and by his own concession, he can't meet it. So <clears throat> then there's, there's no point in uh, asking for more specific measurements because he wouldn't, even if he were right, it, it, uh, it uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, there might be a point to it, but not as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, are we done with that discussion? Uh, <coughs> if I could take the liberty, Joe, I would just do a quickie down the uh, sheet here for the record. Uh, that, based on what I understood you to say, uh, this is an application for a variance from the strict application of the zoning ordinance requirement of section 1963, and a hearing was held on February 23rd. Uh, applicant is looking for a property line variance of 10 feet from the required 40 uh, in the front and in the rear, 15 feet from the required 20 to replace and enlarge an existing concrete patio. In fact, a deck is being built. Uh, Property is owned by Patricia Franson of that address. Uh, the uh, deck has apparently already been constructed. Uh, there was testimony that there may be some serious question about the uh, survey of the property and therefore whether in fact the proposed deck is in accurately located on the property. Uh, and. Uh, there was no evidence presented with regard to a reasonable return. Uh, and the conclusions would be that the land in question can yield a reasonable return. Uh, the need for the variance. Uh, this, this is my insertion, Joe, so if you disagree with it, let me know, but is, is not due to the unique circumstances of the property. Uh, the granting of the variance will not uh, essentially alter the character of the locality and the hardship. Uh, <laughs> uh, is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Um, does that summarize already? You want to correct something there? Well, you did a fairly decent job. I, I think that the hardship has not been established, uh, the last item. Okay. Um, did you say number two was the variance is not due to the unique circumstances? The need would be due to the unique circumstances based on the fact that the house is close <coughs> to the property line. Yeah, no, I said the need is due to the unique circumstances of the property. Well, because I uh, heard, heard you say not. Okay. And the real hardship question comes in number one, Joe. I think the land can or cannot yield you the reasonable return unless the variance is granted. And I took it from your statement and everybody's subsequent discussion that the belief is that it can yield a re reasonable return without a variance. Yes. So for all the above reasons, it's uh, if the board so voted, it would be its judgment that this uh, appeal would be denied. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, which would in effect deny the petition. Uh, and anybody opposed to that motion? Seeing none, the motion carries and the variance request is denied. Thank you, Mr. Franson. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, to hear the request of Everett Johnson, Jr. And Linda Johnson of 1235 Shore Road, tax map U22, lot 80, for a left side property line setback reduction to two feet, six inches from the required 15 feet to add a laundry room and garage to the existing structure. <clears throat> uh, 
let me just say at this stage before I forget it while they're putting their maps up and everything that uh, you have in front of you two uh, documents, one indicating that Scott Balfour of Century 21 Balfour called to say that he supports the above appeal. Uh, as you probably know, Century 21 Balfour is uh, what they say in the parlance, kitty corner to the uh, property in question. And uh, a letter from the United Methodist Church, uh, which is located just down the road uh, toward South Portland on uh, Ocean House Road from the property in question. And they uh, have some abutting property in the back, and they've indicated that uh, they support the project. All set to go? Yes. Who's up? Mr. Johnson. Good evening. My name is Everett Johnson, Jr. Um, I'm here tonight with my wife, Linda, and our architect, John Leisure. Um, my wife, daughter, and I reside at 1235 Shore Road, uh, right smack dab in the middle of the town center of Cape Elizabeth, right under the blinking light. Um, my wife and I have uh, owned the residential property since 1992. Um, I also own and operate an insurance business, EF Johnson Insurance Agency. Uh, that is housed at 300 Ocean House Road, um, and I've owned that property since 1993. Um, I was raised in Cape Elizabeth uh, on Mitchell Road, where my parents still live, and I graduated from Cape Schools in 1970. So I'm familiar with the town and also uh, the town center uh, uh, plans. The rationale for uh, our garage, which I'd like to state in the beginning, has not yet been built. Um, in 1993, my wife and I went before both the zoning board and the planning board uh, seeking site plan approval for our newly purchased properties, uh, lot 080 and lot 079. Uh, our site plan was approved, and without going through all the details of that 93 approval, I'd just like to state at the outset that uh, uh, that plan uh, embodied all the desired char characteristics uh, designated in the town center plan, including acceptable mixed-use residential slash uh, business, uh, off-street or rear parking, parking in the rear of the buildings, and uh, one driveway uh, via uh, uh, deeded uh, right-of-way servicing uh, four lots. Those were the hallmarks of that 93 plan and uh, um, our uh, application which you have uh, uh, enhances, uh, uh, improves, and actually completes the 1993 plan. Um, again, without going through our entire application, um, I'd like to just review ten unique characteristics um, of the 1235 Shore Road property that uh, we think make the case that a side setback variance uh, should be granted. Uh, unique characteristic number one is the building was built in 1873 in the stick style, which is uh, a style that was prevalent in between 1870 and 1890. Um, uh, it's one of the oldest buildings in Cape Elizabeth. The building obviously is non-conforming to current setbacks. In fact, on the west side, it gets to approximately three and a half feet of the property line. Uh, unique characteristic number two, the abutting property to its immediate west, which is my insurance business, 300 Ocean House Road. Uh, that building was built in 1900, uh, and this building is non-conforming uh, to current side setback provisions. In fact, to the west side, towards Jonesy's, uh, uh, garage, Jonesy's gas station, the, the building is to within one foot of the uh, property line. Um, Incidentally, last October, uh, we received from the Cape Elizabeth Historical Society its first award for recognition given to outstanding initiatives in the renovation of a building with respect to its historic uh, uh, qualities. We're very proud of that uh, designation. That's the building to it, our immediate west. Um, abutting the property to the northwest is Jonesy's gas station, and that property is nonconforming. That was built in the 1960s, uh, and that's nonconforming to the extent of about five feet to, to, the, to our property line. Um, Unique characteristic number four is that we have common ownership. Uh, I'm asking for a variance that affects the property 079, which I do own. Um, Unique characteristic number five, we talked about deeded right-of-ways. There is one right-of-way servicing four properties. 
the insurance business, my residential property, and the two scout house properties that, uh, as I understand, are in the process of being sold right now. Um, Can unique you talk characters. For just a second, that phrase scout house lots drives me nuts. What? <laughs> the immediate properties to the, the east, uh, going down, to, down Shore Road. Uh, those the, two little? Those two little ones with the small building that uh, is owned by Stephen Virgilio and right your drive, now. Your driveway is a common driveway to access those lots? Those two also, okay. as well as the two that I own. So when those two are sold, you will have another abutter that could build on those lots? Yes, and he has a site plan, I believe, that's been been filed back in 93 when we came before both boards. Uh, uh, our site plan was sort of married to that one at that time, uh, and that's when the deeded right-of-ways came into play. Thank you. Um, unique characteristic number six, I just have four more here. Unique characteristic number six is that both lots are located in the town center district, uh, and it's important to recognize the town center district has a lot different uh, criteria. It has a prevalence of buildings that are on small lots, uh, using up a large portion of the lot, and are very close together. Um, unique characteristic number seven, granite ledges prohibited uh, the building or construction of, of uh, uh, full basements on either one of our properties. As a result, there is a, a very limited storage space on both my residential property and also the, uh, um, the building on the corner. Unique characteristic number eight, eminent domain uh, powers of the federal and state government. When they straightened Route 77, um, it took a great deal of the properties away from the corner lot, particularly uh, the white building, but also some was taken away from uh, 1235 when they straightened the road and changed the entry point for Shore Road. Um, and they suffered uh, uh, a lack of uh, uh, front yard, or front yard space was taken away from those two properties in the 1960s. Uh, unique characteristics number nine, uh, both, uh, both buildings have been designated as historic resources and uh, fall under uh, specific codes of the uh, uh, enforcement codes. Uh, and the last unique characteristic is number 10, the stick style structure with steeply pitched roofs, high gables, and uh, overhanging eaves provide for no attic space whatsoever, and that uh, also compounds lack of storage space. Uh, in addition to the unique characteristics, uh, I have reviewed my plans for uh, the garage with uh, Greg Jones, the owner of Jonesy's Gas Station. I have a letter that I can leave with you where he supports our project. Uh, I talked to the Methodist Church and they told me they'd be faxing something to you, which apparently they have done. Uh, and uh, they've been supportive of, in the past of the project and I think they still are. Uh, additionally, a visual inspection of the uh, surrounding properties. I've talked about the immediate uh, properties that are non-conforming. But if you look around the town center, um, you'll see that uh, several properties, many of the properties have side setback of less than the required 15 feet. Some of these include the town garage, which is right in the back of this garage. That appears to be less than four feet. Uh, 312 Ocean House Road uh, appears not to be in compliance. Pond Cove Mill Works seems to be within four feet of the uh, uh, boundary line of uh, the uh, IGA. On 299 Ocean House Road, uh, the business center, Tim Thompson's building, as it impacts uh, Century 21, seems to be within four feet. Uh, these are just visual inspections that I've, I've taken myself. Um, basically, that concludes uh, you know, my presentation. I think that uh, um, uh, these unique characteristics of the uh, uh, Shore Road property warrant the uh, uh, setback reduction to two and a half feet. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that uh, you might have. I also, if you like, I can leave uh, uh, a letter from Greg Jones and also uh, an article in the newspaper regarding the uh, uh, historic uh, 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 group's designation as, as ours of a historically significant building. <coughs> You're done, I take it. You want to stay there for a minute, see if we have any questions. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Johnson from members of the board? Mr. Keneally? The existing non-conformity was created through a change in the town zoning laws. 
Has that happened since you've owned the property? No. no. That was before you owned the property? Right. The, uh, the building that we're in and we're asking for is 080, and that was built in 1873. We've made no additions. Uh, when we came before the, the board in, in 1993, we had plans to build the garage, but we did not do it and act within the one year. And after living there for uh, seven years, we've rethought the project. We want to connect it to the kitchen, which means connecting it to that back portion, which is uh, the problem, or where the re reductions call for. Any other questions from members of the board? Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak on uh, this application? There apparently being none, uh, you don't want to get a final word in. <laughs> uh, uh -huh, I knew it. <laughs> a little encouragement. The, the final word is, uh, is really a plea for us to be able to turn an old house into one that uh, supports modern living. Uh, we have three closets in the whole house, mm. no basement and no attic. And uh, it's a big old house. And we really uh, are in need of uh, garage space and storage space, which this proposal will provide in a way that we think is aesthetically pleasing in the center of town. Um, we're very committed to that. And uh, our intention is to have something that uh, will look as good as it will be functional. <coughs> I know that's important to a lot of people since uh, the property is right in the middle of town. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really the, the whole idea behind this, is for us to be able to have a traffic pattern that doesn't walk through the entire house in order to get to the kitchen, and to be able to uh, have some place to put the stuff. Thanks. Mr. Hoden, you have a question? Yes. Excuse me. Before you sit down, uh, Ms. Johnson, uh, in as much as this house is uh, historically acknowledged, uh, have you discussed with any of the uh, people such as Jane Jordan or others as regards the addition and how, the, how this will be compatible with the historic nature of what you already have existing? No, we haven't discussed it with anyone, though we feel you might be able to see from the drawings that we've given you that uh, the addition is very compatible with the style and structure of yeah, well, the house. Yeah. So we're hoping it'd be very hard to tell whether that uh, has yeah. grew there uh, in 1873 or, or whether it was I, I don't think that's part of necessarily part of our charge, but I, I am representing this zoning board on the Historical Structures mm -hmm. Committee to review this, and I was curious. So you've answered my question. Yeah, it's very important to us, too. I did talk with uh, uh, Maureen on the planning board and asked Good. exactly what it meant to be historically significant or what have you. And it really has to do with demolition or tearing something down with 45 note a day notice to abutters. And, and uh, in talking with uh, Maureen, she didn't think that there was any other place we needed to go before. But uh, we've done everything we can. Mr. Leisure has done a great job keeping the stick style with the overhanging eaves. Uh, uh, we think it's going to be a great addition to, uh, to the building. Good. Thank you. Any other questions from yes. the board? Mr. Fasashi? Does this go to the planning board from here, Bruce? Yes. It will go to the planning board for a, for a site plan. Site plan review. review. Okay. So they will have charge on the, the uh, design and a few other things. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we'll call the hearing closed and uh, matters on the table or on the floor or whatever you want to call it. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Hunt. I, I, I don't have any negatives. The only thing I do want to say is this is perhaps was the easiest application to read. It was complete, and I, I thought it had everything in it that I ever wanted to know about what was going on, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yes, let me just echo that. Uh, uh, the Johnsons and their applicant. We were talking in a meeting earlier about some of our frustration with inadequate applications, let's put it that way, making it hard to understand and, and begging for more information and so on. And in this case, nobody wanted for a thing. We appreciate that very much. And we like to hold it up as a model. And there, uh, uh, we also understand that models cost money. <laughs> so it's not a cheap thing to do, and we appreciate you doing it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, and by the way, while I'm thinking of it, most of us aren't going to have any use for these, so if you want them for some other purpose, feel free to come and get them before the meeting's over. Um, it's on the floor for discussion uh, or a motion if there's no discussion. I'd move the application be approved if I can find the stuff to read. Uh, you want mine or? Uh, pardon? No, I have it now. Okay, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I move that the application of uh, Edward F. Everett F. Johnson Jr. and Linda Johnson uh, be approved by the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, from the requirement of Section 1943B2. Uh, which was held today, February 23rd, 1999. The applicant uh, seeks a, a setback reduction from the provisions of 16, Section 1943A1A. The applicant requests a left side property line setback reduction of uh, two, two feet six inches from the required 15 feet zero inches to add a laundry room and garage to the existing structure. The finding of facts, the appellants are the owners of the property at 123 Shore Road. They wish to enlarge the non-existing structure. Uh, the enlargement does not increase the height of that part of the building within the required setback. Conclusions, uh, the reduction is consistent with setbacks uh, existing in the area. Nonconformity uh, was created through town's zoning regulations. The request does meet the conditional use standards of section 1955D, uh, and it's the judgment that uh, it, that it be approved. Uh, I have no conditional conditions of approval to add to that. Fine. Uh, that's your motion. Seconded. A second. Let me just make one correction because you uh, got a little twisted up on the address, 1235 Shore Road. Okay. So the record is clear. Yep. Any other uh, discussion on the motion as it stands? Yes, Seligan. Just a question of clarification on the second conclusion having to do with the change in the zoning regulations. Could that be clarified for the record, what that change was? Um, Bruce, you want to fill in the answer there for Ann? Well, basically, uh, the, the, the uh, existing ordinance requires setbacks that are, are geared to larger lots than what these lots are. And therefore, it, it's a situation where nonconformities are created quite readily because of, of the existence of buildings already on the property in close proximity to property lines. And this was because of the Route 77 changes? Well, no, actually, this is a, this is a side setback. Uh, the, the, the lot's too narrow to meet the re more restrictive setbacks of today. The house was probably built before there was zoning, actually, and the right. zoning was overlaid on top of it. If we're talking 1870s or something. It was a, a remote change in the ordinance. Yeah. <clears throat> although that could, that could happen. Occasionally that would happen, although not a lot, I guess, with a more recent change in the ordinance. We just changed the ordinance a couple of years ago. But the setbacks didn't change. You, you were here for that, Joe. The setbacks didn't change in the, in the most recent change in the ordinance. I don't believe they did, no. I don't think so. No. Any other discussion or questions on uh, the motion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Anyone opposed? I see none. The motion carries and the, uh, the uh, reduction is approved. Good luck with the planning board. Thank you. Thank you. We'd also like to thank uh, Bruce and Maureen, who are really a lot of help kind of coaching us through the process. It really helped to work with you. Thanks, Bruce. <clears throat> <laughs> Once again, if you want these plans, take them because uh, we'll just throw them away. Probably not the best use of them. Uh, is there any other business to come before the board? Yes, point of information. Can I ask Bruce, would the previous applicant have gotten qualified for a reduction setback based upon? No, because there was a front setback. There was a front setback. Okay. Right. The only thing I got is the, the decision that, that was made at the workshop to to do a joint meeting with the planning board for discussion of practical difficulty. Is that something the board needs to, to, to come forward at a meeting and 
decide, or is that is that good enough? I don't think so. As far as I'm yeah. concerned, that's good enough. Just asking the staff to talk to the planning board, see if we can sit down informally. Okay. I suppose a meeting like that would be public, although there would be nothing on the agenda that would be voted on at that point. So I don't know whether we'd have to announce the meeting or something, but uh, there's more than, obviously be more than three gathered, so. Uh, anything else that we need to talk about or can we? Move we adjourn. Second. Anybody gonna vote against that? I don't think so. All right, consider the meeting adjourned. That's record time, actually, I think. Thank you all very much. Where's this part here? Last month was the first time. Got a slider rear setback.